Coach, uh, how are you doing today? Uh, I'm well, thank you. Um, good, nice to be back on the ground again on the field and nice to be back on football stage. Uh, how was the uh, Netherlands? Netherlands, I think for, for, for the players, um, it was a very good, very good competition. I think it was great experience for players and coaches, you know, just so that you can gauge yourself uh, amongst amongst the best academies in the world. I mean, we have the, we had the likes of uh, RB Leipzig, PSG, uh, PSV Eidenhoven, uh, FC Copenhagen. So it's not just only from from the Netherlands, you know, you had from different um, areas or countries, I would say, in Europe. So it was good just to see the different types of football. And like I said, um, comparing yourself as a coach and comparing your players to, to their players. Uh, coach, you saw from uh, pictures and some of the videos shared, uh, mm. you had interactions with other coaches. Yeah. Uh, how was those engagements and what was in terms of information sharing? What uh, topics did you deal with? Yeah, look, I think um, with regards to, to, to Orange Range, the organizers, I think the way they structured it is, is very nice because um, you, you, we had majority of the, of the club staying at the same hotel. And then you had breakfasts um, in one wall. So it was good opportunities to, to interact and, and to have, to, not to network necessarily, but like you're saying, to, to share ideas and to bounce off this. And um, for me to you know, speak to, to the coaches, the goalkeeper coaches specifically, it was just um, a lot of insight uh, from my side. We, we might think that, yes, we, we are a third world country and then we, we think, okay, uh, we need to ask questions, ask questions. But then you, you start realizing that you you can also you giving them ideas and you sharing information and you on, and, and you guys are actually on we're on the same same page to, to a certain extent so for me that was gratifying i think to a certain degree where i can see that my goalkeepers in 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 a sense was just as good as their goalkeepers when it came to shot stopping and yes here in their technical abilities maybe they were a bit better when it comes to distribution um when when, when you look at the players itself infield what I can say is, I mean, you look at something simple like like a finishing draw in a warm-up and uh, the, the, the players will pass it to their coach on the edge of the box, they lay it off. They literally have nine out of their ten shots is on target, seven is on goal. I, I mean, I don't even see that in the PSL warm-ups, you know. So just, they, they're technically a lot better than us uh, individually. Um, and, and structures is there and, and you can see also when coaches make certain uh, changes in the match and certain things when they go to from a back four to a back three the, the way they can switch the, the players can switch to, to different formations and the understanding of the game I think it's just a little bit better um, and, and that's where I think we can we can improve here in South Africa uh, Talking about goalkeeping uh, you, you, you played in the PSL for a long time yeah. Uh, you are now a goalkeeper coach, so yeah. you are the right person to, to answer or maybe give us clarity in terms of the standard of goalkeeping in the PSL and how, uh, because we see a lot of uh, goalkeepers from outside the country coming in, mm. does this speak to the level of which we are as a country in terms of goalkeeping or what is your thoughts around that? Yeah, look, this, uh, this we, we, you know what, we can chat about that. Uh, for, for, for many many hours the, the the biggest problem is is I understand where the where the club owners come from choosing foreign goalkeepers because at the end of the day is you you you, you you're sitting in with your in your hand you're sitting with a 50 60 million rand status do you understand and you need to defend that you uh, you you get relegated and you're going to a 10 million rand status in the NFT so I understand why they they're not too eager to give opportunities to the younger goalkeepers because what we all know is younger goalkeepers you need to cater for them costing you in a season if you have a 20 year old keeper and you're going to play him the whole season you need to know that the mistakes are going to happen because that's how keepers learn but then where that mistakes comes goals so you're going to concede goals so you could potentially have drawn a game could have lost a game which you should have drawn draw a game which you should have won so he can cost you eight to ten points per season and are psl owners prepared to to to, to take that risk i don't think so Though I do think that we we need to encourage it with, with clubs. Like for example, I mean we've got a very, very good prospect at Kaiser Chiefs, I think. Uh, everybody says yes, I always rant and rave about him, Pontle Molefe, uh, under 20 national uh, and under 23. Um, but he needs to play. And 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 one thing I'll tell his agent, and I, I see now that he, he extended his contract at Chiefs, but he needs to go and play. If he's not gonna play next season, let Chiefs loan him out to to, to a club that is looking for a goalkeeper in the PSL because that's the only way that we will 
we will create stronger goalkeepers. Because if you look after Kune, after Ranwan, who do we have? Okay, Kune is now something potentially out from the past when it comes to the national team. Then you look at uh, after Williams. Williams is 32 maybe this year, uh, 31, 32. So he's got what, three, four years left? But who's after him? Billy Mott was 27. I mean, I would like to one day see, and, and it, would be a, it would be a dream come true, that you see one of our under-23 keepers are part of the national team. We haven't seen that in, 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 in I don't know how long. And that's also what we need to do. But where do our keepers go from national under-20 and national under-23? They're just fading away. Why are they fading away? Is because clubs are not giving them opportunities to play, to get the experience, to get uh, game experience, match experience, because that's the only way that, that you can improve as a goalkeeper. And I look at the likes of Bavuma. Uh, maybe had he gone to a club where he could be a regular, he could be a regular in the Bafana team, um, you know. Um, and, and, I, and I see that, I see the same thing happening to Bavuma that I saw with Riyad Pitesa. When the Riyad Peter came back, we said, okay, he's going to try a Chiefs or that, and then he went to Sundowns, then he went to, I mean, sorry, to Supersport, and then to Sundowns. But why not go to a club where you can play regularly? Because he's got all the attributes to be a national team keeper. So there's a lot of factors that we, that we take into consideration, but we also have to look at our grassroots levels. Like here, I mean, look, we, I've got very good goalkeepers in the GDL here. I've watched Chiefs GDL, Sundowns GDL, Supersport, and there's good goalkeepers. We've got good goalkeepers. We just need to find ways that we can let them step up from, from national under 20 and then playing professional football. Uh, talking about the development of goalkeepers, I'm sure when you started the, the, the training methods back then uh, are way different to now, taking into consideration that the goalkeepers are now more involved yeah. in the build-up so their footwork needs to improve. In terms of the training methods now, what is more prevalent today compared to, to back in the days when we were starting out? Look, for, for me, the most important thing is you, you're a goalkeeper, you need to stop the ball. That's the most important thing. Yes, we, we like the fact that goalkeeping is more involved. When you look at the likes of Edison, Allison, uh, even Gautoua, uh, Neuer, De Stegen, they, they're involved in build-ups. Yes, we, we understand that. But at the end of the day, what is your main role? Your main role as a goalkeeper is to, is to stop the ball from coming in. And I understand, and that's what also, like I said, is what I was talking about, the, the things that I've seen in, in, in Europe with all these goalkeepers, their warm-ups, their training, they are very comfortable with their feet. And I think it's very, very important that even at a, at a young age, we start already, we start at 11, 12 years old, teaching our kids to drop kick the ball to one another and catching the ball, and then we're teaching them to pass and receive. It's fundamental. It's, a, it's one of the key characteristics of a goalkeeper in the modern day football is to be very comfortable playing with his feet with the ball at his feet so we do implement a lot where they where they will join the team in rondos or what i like to do with my goalkeepers is i like to to um to tell the coach to put them in at center back because center back is very similar to 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 a keeper with regards to when you have to play so you have to read the situation you have to play with your feet obviously just you can't use your hands so we do that a lot at least once a week i'll have my keeper play in as a center back because it also gets a bit of cardio in but it also gets that movement because if you have to be as a sweeper keeper you must be able to control your box but you also need to be able to move outside and coming back and forth back and forth so it just helps him with that uh, last one coach it's one of the topics when one speaks about goalkeeping will always come up in terms of the importance of height yeah. uh, as a country uh, i can't remember the exact average height of, a, of, a, of south africans but we are not that tall yeah uh, usually we are not tall tall, tall people yeah uh, we are shorter uh, so in terms of goalkeeping what then does it mean for us in terms of producing world-class goalkeepers look it's it's a it's a big factor i mean yes i've got a 14 year old boy that's 187 so it's very very important but i, I also believe that what 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 makes us different from the rest of the world is and i think when you look at europe they will look at first at physicalities. We will look at, we are generally good athletes as South Africans and as Africans, we are good athletes. So if you are short a goalkeeper and you enjoy the position, yes, it will be difficult to, to export you, which, which I feel is something that we need to improve on. We need to start exporting goalkeepers, letting them play at higher level, at higher leagues, letting them play at bigger stages. And I think that will improve our national, our national team as well. Like, for example, again, I will always use Bontley as an example, and everybody says, yes, he's your, he's your, he's your son or whatever. <laughs> no, it's just, 
He's got all the physical attributes and, and somebody that I've worked with recently. Now imagine he plays for Chiefs 2023-2024 season and he does well. And he's under 23, all the consistently under 23. And we sell him to a Belgian team and he does well there. That's our future, you understand? And that's how I think we should look at it in, 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 in the long run. But coming back to, to what your question is of physicalities, if we want to export, yes, you, you're going to have to be your 188 to 191. Look, I understand what they're saying is more goalkeepers are a little bit shorter, like the Stegen, like uh, Pickford, like uh, Loris, um, even the Gaia, 184, 185. We can handle that. But if you really want to go and play in the biggest stages in the world, I think physicality is important. But I also believe that now is there's a lot of ex, there's a lot of extra other ways of compared to when I grew up where it was you either play PSL or you go and work or you play NFD it's part time now kids have opportunities to go play university football and get scholarships to America now they've got opportunities to go via Varsity Cup year and get drafted whether it's Tux whether it is UJ so there's a lot more avenues and I think if your quality is good enough you can survive in the PSL would you then be able to and I think that is probably one of the biggest reasons why Kune wasn't snapped up, why Ronwin wasn't snapped up, it was only because of physicalities. Yes, Kune could have gone and played maybe championship uh, in the UK or second division, but I mean to get in, into the Premier League or get into one of the bigger leagues, the French leagues, I think the physicality part was a stumbling block for him. So in that sense, yes, I think it plays a role, but I don't think it should necessarily play a massive role if your, if your idea is of making it PSL or even if you consider playing in Singapore as a goalkeeper, as a success. Coach, thank you very much. Coach. Thank you, man. Really appreciate it, my no problem. Thank you, man.